Warriors, it's Victoria coming to talk to you about your CFS bucket list and why you should have one. And I got cracked up at this term that one of our Warriors, Ramona, used as she talked about going on a retreat. And that was something she had long wanted to do, get out in nature with a group of women and have a weekend away. And she did it. And she was so thrilled. And it reminded me how much doing things like that had had an influence in my recovery. And so I just want to encourage you that, first of all, you need to have a list of things that you want to do. And the thing that helped me the most with this is it caused me to really practice my tools. Now, if you don't have any tools in recovery, you need to get some tools. So over my whole recovery, I've used everything from meditation to EFT, to brain retraining, to serious boundary work, to supplements, to, you know, movement, routine, structure, you know, just a whole host of tools that I've got in my kit that are great for the rest of your life as well, for a healthy life. And so basically, you know, what it did is when I would prepare for a trip or to prepare to go somewhere that was something I wanted to do, it really caused me to tighten up on those things to make sure that every day I was diligently doing my three minute walk, that every day I would be sure to pace myself so that I knew that I had enough energy to be with the kids and to do, you know, something over here or whatever it was, but to really manage that in a, in a good way so I wasn't pushing and crashing. And it also kept me really, you know, strong with my brain retraining. I'll never forget when we went to England and like I had to go in and out of taxi cabs and up and down stairs, things that I had not done in years. And I had to really go to the mattresses, as they say, with the brain retraining after every event and before. So these are actually... They're actually like, they set you, it's almost like the Olympics. It's like you train for it, then you go and do it. You see how you did, you make adjustments, and you set your course for your next adventure. At least that's what I did. And I know that might sound a little bit outlandish for some of you if you're bed bound, but you can start with, I want to go sit outside on the deck once a week. And then you can practice breathing techniques in bed. You can watch your, uh, you know, if you have any health programs that you're doing online so that you can actually begin to build that muscle so that you can get out once a week. Or if it's a park down the street, that might be your next adventure after you're able to easily manage getting out on the deck. So you can see that this kind of thing can take you all the way through recovery. And it did for me. You know, I remember one thing and it was windsurfing. I had always wanted to get back on a board. So what I did when I was bed bound is I watched a series of videos on how to windsurf. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this. So I started doing my walk. It took me a year to work up from a three minute walk to a 10 minute walk. And I was doing some very minimal strength training exercises. But you know what? It was amazing that I was able to get on that board when we left and we went on vacation and I was able to windsurf because of what I had learned. It was like I got up and went straight away. So I'm not saying that to brag. It's just that that was not something that in my normal days that I had the physical capacity for, but I'd built up enough strength and stamina without pushing and crashing to where I was able to do that as an event. Now, I haven't done it since, but you know, I've done a lot of other things. So it's, in other words, you just pick something that will cause you to really get serious with your recovery, to get serious on whether it's nutrition or supplements or again brain retraining, EFT, using those tools because you have to use them. It's almost like once you get yourself in that environment that's really uncomfortable and outside your comfort zone, you're forced to use them in a way. But if you've practiced them, you've got access to them. But you begin, but you really lean hard on them when you're in those places if that makes sense. So anyway, I just want to encourage you, get a sheet of paper out, write down the things you would love to be doing, start small, start with what 
might even feel like easy for you that you can start with. Like again, if you can get outside and sit on the deck at a certain time of day, you know, in nature, start with that. Or if you're father in law in recovery, start with something even more that might that will stretch you. But that's what is having a bucket list is about is it's for stretching and it's about setting something before you that you can reach for. And I can look back over my recovery and just see every little adventure that I went on, whether it was just to the coffee shop with my daughter for a chat with coffee like back in the day training for that was just it just really gave me something to shoot for so anyway warriors I hope that helps remember life's not over it's starting again and I speak life health and wholeness over you Thanks for watching the video. I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support my channel. And hop on over to Facebook. Join us at CFS Warriors Academy where you can learn about all kinds of different modalities that help